you're holding that thing in front of my face for, huh? Let's take a picture. I'm so goddamn beautiful. The girls are just jumping all over my ass. Not only the girls, but the boys, too, and the men. I gotta have a bodyguard. Reverend Ellington is a big, tough guy. He keeps them goddamn boys off of me. Is there a girl? Yeah, well, she might as well learn the facts along. Ah, they say. Oh, yeah. Now, what do you want to know? I'm gonna pose like a son of a bitch, too. <laughs> ah, show my teeth. Okay. A shoot. <laughs> what do you want to know? I'll tell you all about how to cure the sick. You know what makes them sick? Now, I'm gonna tell you how to cure them. First of all, do away with the electric shock. It interferes with the abstract thinking, the prefrontal lobes. Bring back the metrazole, but fatten them up with meat, the muscle, not the fat, the muscle. Plenty of meat and uh, liver, mostly liver, meat, fish, eggs, all your dairy products. But don't mix the milk with the meat. Go back to the Jewish dietary laws. Gabish. Then you give them the metrazole. Three treatments and I was all right. I had three electric shocks that made me crazy. 60 insulin treatments did nothing but blow up my body. I weighed 180 pounds, but the mattress all, ah, the pins and needles went right out of my head. And the anxiety and laying on the couch like a dead man, that disappeared. Bring back the mattress all. Dr. Murphy, a good Irish Catholic doctor, invented it. And Dr. Bellinger in the Brooklyn State Hospital, he used it on me and got me out in four months on my 21st birthday, February 22nd. What a gift, huh? On my, uh... On Labor Day of 1957, the Christian Science Practitioner brought me out of it. Then I decided I was going to commit suicide. I tried everything, even the Roman Catholic, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, the pieces of the bones of uh, St. Teresa and all that shit. I drank holy oil and holy water. My sister bathed me with all that bullshit. And I said, ah, either I'm going to get cured this weekend or I'm going to get the throat cut because the doctors had written to my sister, and I sneak, I'm a snoop, hey. He's hopeless. He's going to stay here for life. I passed the, the Catholic chaplain's office, and the Protestant minister, that son of a bitch, he says to the priest, he says, I see they threw the Christian scientists out of the chapel. And the priest said, well, they do what's good. See, the Catholics are very charitable. He said they do what they can, because we're only a small group. I said, the son of a bitch, right at that moment, mind you, when I heard it, that's not coincidence, that's a divine plan. I went to the Christian scientist. In three days, on a Monday, I came back to the hospital. The Jewish doctor, he looked at me. I was sitting big as life on the telephone. He says, quoting from the Bible, he hath put the mighty down from their seat and hath exalted them of low degree. I was a dead dog on the floor on the Friday when I went on past, and on Monday, I was a big shot behind the goddamn desk. <laughs> See, now I was all right for a couple of years, but I worked too goddamn hard. Then the son of a bitch, Hendy, he forces me to take electric shock up there. I call him a bag of bones, a bag of uh, a rag bag, a refugee from the rag bag, a Protestant son of a bitch again. He gave me the electric shock. He destroyed my memory and my thinking process. A dirty bastard. He's going to pay with crushed hands. Uh, you put this right on the goddamn film. Because my brother Mike's in the syndicate, and Vinny is his helper too. I want this all to go right on the goddamn soundtrack. Either that or he's going to go down on his goddamn knees. And he's going to get the electric shock. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That son of a bitch is going to get electric shock. He's crazy. He's got the Jehovah complex. This time, it was the medicine and the Christian science, too. The Nardil and the Stelazine and this new one, the Melaril. And the sodium amytal for the people that can't sleep at night. Why don't you use the sodium amytal? It isn't that habit forming, is it? Hey, come on. You're supposed to be uh, telling me. This is all I get, Melaril to keep me from going to, into euphoria. See, that's what happened the last time. I, I, I went so high, be Jesus, there was nobody holding me down. I went not past the goddamn moon or the rocket. I was way up on them goddamn, uh, those, anyway, those, come on, help me. Uh, what, what I don't know. Called? You don't know? You didn't study astronomy. What the hell's the matter with you? The outer space, uh, way back, uh, 10 million light years away. See, but I had to have my feet on the ground. I had my feet on the ground. My head was a million miles away, you see. Now the head is back down on the earth. The feet have always been on the ground. The head was in the mud, too, when I was uh, not catatonic. I had no memory. I had amnesia, almost 98%. Now the happy medium. Now I'm this way, like you want. Like the smoothing of the water when they throw the oil on the water, this way. And when somebody says something rotten to me or they hit me, I don't get hurt and depressed and slink into a chair. I get so goddamn mad I beat the shit out of them like my mother did with the baseball bat. My mother hit them goddamn whops in the head with a baseball bat. 
And the girls, if they come home late, she hit the boyfriends on the back with a broom and she threw the dishes at the girls like Maggie and Jigs. Down the cellar she chased them. She'd sit up and cussing and swearing and putting the curse of Rome on the head until 11 o'clock they were all in. Then she said the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost and she went to bed and she slept this piece of the just. That's why she survived to be 51 with nine children, seven daughters. She'd been company at the same time. She had six or seven more uh, children after that, still births and some that lived. Oh, my brothers, what a tragedy. With two boys, me and my brother Ziggy, and the seven girls that lived, the girls were tough. But the five or six boys she had after that, well, in that time of life, they're not supposed to have the children. They were either still births, or they died, or the doctors couldn't uh, put the life into them, or they died within three or four months. She was too old. She, she had her last children when she was in her 40s. A Does woman that sadden you? No! I, I got all kinds of little brothers here and there. I was in the Big Brothers organization in Boston when I was a Protestant minister. You're from Boston? No, I went to Boston University there. Hmm. Brothers and sisters. These are all my brothers and sisters. Even the Collards, too. There's some that are so goddamn nice. Most of them are a bunch of shitheels, too. But the Jews are my best friends and the Christian scientists. The Protestants are all fucked up. They're all against something, but they ain't for. I can't figure out what the hell are they for. They're negative. Protestants, they're the son of a bitches that go preaching the Bible up and down them goddamn halls there. And they're saying they're being persecuted. They're not being persecuted. The son of a bitches are sick. They see visions and hear voices and all that horse shit. The only ones that saw the visions and heard the voices that were real saints were people like Joan of Arc. There was a real... She didn't hear voices. Only what we Christian scientists call angel thoughts, God directing our thought processes. Not voices. We don't hear voices and we don't see visions. We see in the mind's eye. You do too, don't you? I'm right here now. Can't you picture your wife and your children at home and what she's doing, getting your supper prepared? You can. Sure. Now, of course. That's what it is in Christian science. Only clear. I'm spitting all over the place. That is. All right, so. Oh, where's that cup of java? Not on. Cup of poison, I call it. You know what the coffee is good for? It serves as a good purgative to wash your lower intestine out. And the trinesia I get, it settles the acid stomach. But I haven't had any trinesia for two days. Of course, they're afraid of me. I terrorize the ward. And Reverend Ellington, who's my very best friend, he's doing the healing work. He's a student of Christian science, too, now. Because I don't want to be bothered. I pray for them, too. But I ain't going to fight. I play the piano and I pray for the son of a bitches. That's all. They're mostly a bunch of dead bellies. They're dead from the neck up and from the waist down, they ain't got far to go. They're alive in the pants, most of them. But from here on up, they're dead spiritually and mentally. From here on down, all the bellies are alive. They pile all that goddamn chow in there and they never take a shit. You ought to hear the way they stink, some of them old bastards that sit in the chairs. An old chief, we got an Indian chief. He shits maybe once a week. It smells like a serpent crawled up his ass and died there. If you don't like this uh, dirty talk on the thing, the hell with you. Mrs. Mayor and Dr. Slockbauer would approve. There's nothing bashful about me. When I was a, ba a kid, I used to run down the cellar and hide in the coal bin when anybody came in the door. But they shot me out of that. The insurance man used to come around on Friday night and ask my mother, can George come and turn the lights out in the synagogue? I flicked the switch, the old rabbis. Orthodox, I still go see them every time. And that's the first place I head for, for the rabbis over there. They couldn't flick the switch. Oh, yeah, he used to lift me up. I was five or six years old. Oh, let me just pose a little bit now. Hmm, I wish I had some different clothes. Oh, look at the clear, beautiful eyes. Let me see. Get me all around here. How about the physique? Shall I take my shirt off or anything like that? Oh, sure. Sit down. No. <laughs> I'm a ham, I told you. I'm not repressed anymore, kid. I'm not inhibited. But I'm not an extrovert either. I know when to shut up and listen to people who know. Can you now? I certainly can. I can maintain silence here for the rest of the time, and you talk. I asked you to. Go ahead. Now, let's see if you can keep quiet for a few moments. Mm -hmm. <coughs> done very well. 
I have complete control. I don't have the control. God has the control of the mind of Christ, or near Christ. Now you do the talking. I refuse to talk now. You insult me. You insult my intelligence and my sensibilities. We're very excited. We are Italian. Very dramatic. <laughs> I can cuss you out one minute and the next minute I'm all off here. <laughs> I think people there. I call them dirty black niggas. You know why? Because they're too goddamn easy on patients. I could tell you the nurse, that Dudley, that son of a bitch. I told Miss Sherman, she said, sweet little colored girl, she's like a little mouse. Stay the hell away from Dudley. Listen, while I was there, he was locked up in the security room all day long. Today he was out all morning. Ed Ellington's been working with him, and the Protestant chaplain came in. In other words, all the fates had come in.